Shalom, Shalom, darling. Shalom. Shalom, tada, mazel tov, hello. A lot is out of the race to host Eurovision 2019. Should we talk about it? Let's do this. And then there were two. Out of seven, seven cities were racing to host Eurovision 2019. Oh, I was talking about me and you. Oh, we are too. <laughs> yes, there are two we vloggers here ready to discuss the two remaining options, which are, of course, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Now, Deb and Jack Lawson, a wee blogger, has written an article on Wee Blogs about this issue, and he brings up the interesting point that Jerusalem is what? The Jewish capital of the world. But Tel Aviv is what? The Hebrew capital of the world. Yes, a stark contrast, Jerusalem millennia of history, you know, a religious capital to billions of people around Enshrined the world. Enshrined in, you know, sort of sacred culture and history. History. But it's also been fought over for throughout history. The most fought over place in modern history, no doubt. And then you've got Tel Aviv, a city in the desert built to party. <laughs> yeah, nobody fights there, we just come to party. Modern gay capital. I'm a golden boy. Capital of the Middle Eastern nightlife. And LGBTQI capital of the Middle East. Hub <laughs> H-U-B. <laughs> but you see, this is a real stark contrast. Now, if you look at arenas. Yes. They both have options. In Jerusalem, there are two. You've got Teddy Stadium, but there's no roof. Oh, but God, it seats 32,000 people. Ain't that no roof. 32,000. But there ain't no roof! Weather forecast in Jerusalem around the time of May is favorable. 15 to 25, slightly unpredictable. Tel Aviv, <laughs> it's always around 20. And it's got a coastline! Yes! On the water. Let's talk about the other option, the Peace Arena, Pi Arena. Yes! That's yes. where Jerusalem wants to host it. It's a basketball stadium, a basketball it's arena. Quite, yeah, it's quite small. It's 11,000, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, more intimate. It doesn't look as, I don't know, impressive? Mm, yes, it doesn't. Honey, take me to Tel Aviv. What's the venue there? Charles Clore Park for the Euro Village, honey! Before we get to the village, <laughs> let's talk about the concert. They have Pavilion 2 at the Tel Aviv Fairgrounds. They've hosted a lot of venue, uh, a lot of events. Oh yeah. About 10,000 people, so slightly smaller than Altice Arena. Considerably smaller. Considerably, but I feel like it's more modern than the Pi Arena in Jerusalem. Yes. But take me to Charles Clore Park. Uh, you know, and you know what's fabulous about Charles Clore Park? If you can't get into the arena, it'll be televised anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Big screen TVs. They want Eurovision Village to be on point. More food, more Alki Pop for you adults, more combinated beverages for kitty. clubs. And the view. Talk, talk, talk. Oh, breathtaking. Honey, I exercised with Eurovision 2016 contestant Yuri. You Pichon sure did. In this park at the inaugural Israel Can Comedy. we roll the tape? Roll the tape. Okay. <laughs> when was the last time you exercised like this? Uh, as I told before, uh, behind the scenes that it was 1994, 1st of July, when my mom gave birth. <laughs> so I really haven't worked out, never. And you're a very big boy, so she must have worked very hard indeed. <laughs> My ass nearly fell off that faux elliptical. In any event, stunning venue. Look, I'm just gonna call a spade a spade. It looks like we're going to Tel Aviv because last night, Jan, last night, Thursday, August 30th, Jan Ola Sand said Shabbat must not interfere with the hosting of the Eurovision Song Contest. And by Shabbat, we mean the holy rituals, sundown Friday, sunrise, sorry, sunset, Saturday, that 24 hour period. Um, Jerusalem, the ultra orthodox community really follows this. They don't want, re want rehearsals to take place. Whereas Tel Aviv is more secular. You know, there's still transport. Things don't shut down. You can still eat. Whereas in Jerusalem, during that period, things close down. You may be there to party, but you ain't gonna be partying. I think more to the point, uh, from the standpoint of fairness, uh, because there are a couple of religious holidays in Israel's Remembrance Day and Israel's Independence Day Early in May, May. Yeah, which kind of, you know, impact both cities. But Tel Aviv has never had the opportunity Hunty. to host it. Hunty. They're not going to do it during May 1, May 8 period. It's too holy. You can't have Eurovision during that period. So let's just rule that week out. Let's yeah. push it back. 
I'm but still what I'm saying, saying is, yeah, I'm still, <laughs> I'm, also, I'm still saying Tel Aviv because Tel Aviv has not hosted it. Jerusalem has had it twice before. Yeah. You know what? Spread the love. Celebrate diversity. Spread the love. Feel your heartbeat all over Israel. <laughs> Feel your rhythm. Share the moment all over Israel. All aboard, honey. Or what if it's 2009 Moscow? Have that bird dancing. <laughs> Cause ain't no, ain't, ain't no slogan that yet. In any case, I think this is pretty clear. We're going is to Tel Aviv. Your fire lit. Oh, my fire is lit in Tel Aviv. Okay, it's lit in Tel Aviv. Okay. I just don't think it's going to be in Jerusalem. I really think that Yano Lassan's comments have kind of hinted that it's going to be Tel Aviv. But you have like the likes of Miri Garrett, Regev, and all these sort of. Ms. Miri <laughs> Regev has a lot to say, but I am no longer interested in listening. Yano Lassan also said. And I think he may have been referring to Ms. Regev, that lots of politicians want to be perceived as having a part in all of this, and so they make comments that are not always true. So maybe there have been instances in which she has spoken kind of out of turn. I, I mean, that is really a... Because she's a shrewd political operator. Woman is smart. She but is that a is smart a real leader. shut it down moment, like, isn't it? Of Rihanna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing that buzzer. <laughs> Yeah. You know what, when you press the buzzer, someone wins or someone loses. More to the point, an event that is watched by over 200 million people shouldn't be overshadowed by sort of religious pursuit or Zionist cause or anything like that. And you know what, it's not like Israel doesn't have the option of other cities to step in and take that smokescreen away. So, you know, move it. Move yeah, Eurovision it. shouldn't be political. We always no. say this. Eurovision should be about the song, contest, the music. You don't want drama surrounding the event to overshadow the event. So my vote goes to Tel Aviv. And just one more point that we need to raise Raising. as well. Um, you know, lots of our readers have also made the point of saying, well, you know, Jerusalem is tried and tested, but honey, 1999 was a long time ago. A long, that, okay, <laughs> just picture Charlotte Pirelli Ben Janssen, I believe, Janssen, in Charlotte that outfit. Nielsen. Nielsen, <laughs> who is Charlotte Janssen? Charlotte Nielsen, she was taking us to her heaven with a major fashion faux pas. Just look at that outfit, that will summarize the era. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't wear that today. So why don't we go back to the venue where you wore that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Many of you weren't even born, but um. I wasn't either. <laughs> so yeah, Eurovision has grown considerably in size and in um, in scale and in impact. You you yes. cannot you know just kind of shoehorn it back into Jerusalem. Although having said that, Jerusalem arguably has more hotel rooms. Yeah, but they're at a very high price point. Tel Aviv has a greater range of price points from you know dirtbag youth hostels. I've stayed there, ain't no shame. <laughs> to super lux luxury. So it's Dan Panorama, honey. Yes, okay, <laughs> on the Charles Clore Park. So from flea bag to luxury, whereas Jerusalem is definitely a higher price point. But Israelis do listen, and I strongly feel that this Eurovision will probably be a tale of two cities. I tell you why. There's a high-speed rail interlink, which it's is not yet complete scheduled to open spring next year. And you know what? Even if it's not, you can still drive between the two quite easily. Tel Aviv is 20 minutes hours. from Ben Gurion. Jerusalem is 40 minutes from Ben Gurion. Yeah. It takes but like 90 minutes in traffic to go between the two. The rail link will make it equidistant. Point 20 of story minutes. is, you will still be able to showcase Jerusalem. I'm speaking to the Israeli politicians to people who are visiting and to the world, even if you don't host the contest there. And you know what? Fans are going to go there anyways, because there are always tours, etc. People will see. I mean, you won't be in Israel for two weeks and not touch Jerusalem. I mean, honestly. <laughs> in any case, we need to wrap this up. Our vote is pretty clear. Let us know your vote and your prediction here on We Be Blood. Can I, can I put in a quick request? Please. Can you wrap it up with a message to the Israeli politicians? Shout out to Mary Regev. Thank you for all of your commentary in recent months. It has been illuminating. It has been interesting. But according to Jan Ole, it hasn't always been true. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, Pinterest, Tumblr, Facebook. Yeah, all that stuff. Get digital, get Tel Aviv. We'll see you later. Bye!